Hello everyone, my name is Mike, creator of Zwiftalyzer, and welcome back to my series on how to avoid dropouts on Zwift. Today we are talking about how Bluetooth has overtaken AMP Plus on the PC for connecting indoor cycling sensors, why it provides a more stable connection, and some tips for how to configure an external USB dongle to improve your connection. The Zwiftalyzer data for the PC platform shows Bluetooth usage up in 2023 compared to the previous year and Amplus usage down, the blue bars in this chart. Before we dive into the details, please consider subscribing to support the channel and the Zwiftalyzer project. So what are the benefits of using Bluetooth? Well, the biggest benefit is fewer dropouts. This Zwiftalyzer report shows that on PC, of rides using Amplus exclusively, half of them had one or more dropouts. For the rides using Bluetooth exclusively, only a quarter had one or more dropouts. This data includes logs uploaded over a three month period, December 2023 to the beginning of March 2024, and includes activities that are 15 to 90 minutes long, with outliers removed and time spent on the pairing screen removed. Another benefit of Bluetooth is that people say their trainer feels more responsive to gradient changes, which adds to the immersiveness. Bluetooth is also a requirement for using various Zwift peripherals, like play controllers, virtual shifting, and the Elite Steerzo for steering. Dropouts cause you to lose power and fall off the back in a Zwift race or group ride. They can really spoil your enjoyment of the platform. Adding more peripherals to the already crowded 2.4 GHz frequency band is even more reason why you need a stable connection. Bluetooth has fewer dropouts because it is constantly hopping around 36 frequencies to avoid congested channels. Amp Plus uses a fixed frequency and doesn't have any interference avoidance schemes. However, as we'll see later, while this frequency hopping helps avoid interference, it adds time to the initial device discovery and connection process in Zwift. Nevertheless, using a Bluetooth USB dongle instead of your PC or Mac's built-in Bluetooth can provide a more stable connection because by placing the dongle on an extension cord, you can get it closer to your devices, avoid obstructions, and get a direct line of sight from your smart trainer or power meter to the dongle. You also separate the Bluetooth radio signal from your Wi-Fi signal, which is another cause of interference. Look at this typical laptop guts, for example. The antenna for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi is shared and runs along the back inside edge of the case. This setup can make it challenging to get a clear line of sight from the antenna to your trainer, especially if you're using your laptop screen for Zwift and can't move it to one side. A USB extension cable has long been the recommended way to use an Ant Plus dongle, but it's not that simple to set up an external Bluetooth dongle due to the potential conflicts with the existing onboard Bluetooth chip. There are also some operating system incompatibilities to be aware of when buying a dongle. I'm now going to provide step-by-step -step guidance on how to disable the onboard Bluetooth on PCs and Macs to avoid conflicts. Then I'll recommend the best dongles for Windows and Macs. To use an external dongle without any issues on Windows, carefully follow these steps. Use the Windows search bar to find Bluetooth. Then open the control panel and for each device that is paired, choose Remove Device. Next, use the Windows X key to bring up this menu, then Device Manager. Expand Bluetooth. Now right click on your Bluetooth controller and choose Uninstall Device. Make sure to keep, do not check, delete the driver software. Now restart, then go into your BIOS. We're going to disable the onboard Bluetooth chip. In my laptop, it's under security, then IO port access. With that expanded, I'd key down to Bluetooth, hit enter, then choose disabled. Next. I hit F10 on my laptop to save changes and exit and restart. Now I go back to the device manager, Windows X key, to bring up that menu, plug in the dongle, 
expand Bluetooth. I see at the bottom there the TP-Link Bluetooth 5 USB adapter is installed. Now I'll use and search again and go to the Bluetooth and other devices. And I'm only doing this because I want to pair my headphones. That is the only thing you need to pair within Windows for Zwift. I mean, you don't pair heart rate monitor or anything else in this section. You do that in Zwift itself. So under here, go to power first. Now it does take a little while for devices to show up. I'll talk more about that later. Then I'm going to choose my Asioma pedals. Same for heart rate monitor. My ticker shows up very quickly. That's a bit unusual. It's not always that quick. And after a few moments of going from no signal, and then I now see the heart rate signal being received. To use an external dongle on a Mac, the steps are very similar. Click Bluetooth in the top menu, go to settings, then for each device listed, click on the icon, forget device, and that's it. Do it again, forget this device. Okay, then close window. Now, before you reboot, click Option, then Bluetooth. Make a note of the address of the controller. Usually the last two numbers will change, just remember those, mine's 3C. Now in a terminal, type this command, sudo nvram bluetooth host controller switch behavior equals always. I'll talk about that a bit. Uh, that's like setting the BIOS, the non-volatile RAM. It means that when a Bluetooth dongle is plugged in, it will take precedence over the built-in. Now they go back, click to option, and you would have seen that the last two numbers had changed there. So the address is different. And if you go to the system info, that confirms that the chipset is third party dongle. Now I'll, I'll pair a device in the usual way, just pair my headphones. And that's the only thing you need to connect here for Zwift. You don't, do not need to device, connect any devices there. It's all done now within Zwift. Bluetooth icon up in the top right, you see that pulsating, that's great. Now searching for the power device and it's taking a little longer this time. That's completely random. Okay, Asioma is being detected. Now same for heart rate. This one is taking uh, a lot longer than on the PC. Again, it's not a Mac PC thing or a dongle thing. It's just random. I'll talk more about why in a moment. Then the ticker's found, connected, and it's receiving data. Great, we're all set. So now you're ready to plug in a USB dongle, but which one should you buy? Well, looking inside the most common USB Bluetooth dongles available today, there are three common chip makes. Cambridge Silicon Radio, acquired by Qualcomm, Broadcom, and Realtek. The Panda, Heidi's, CSR 4.0, and TP-Link BT400 contain the CSR 8510 chip. These are plug and play on Windows and work on Intel Macs before Sonoma. I had good results with the Heidi's on Windows. I also tested this Heidi's on an Intel iMac running Catalina and it was excellent. Sadly though, it only had partial functionality on an M1 MacBook Air running Sonoma. Audio worked, but Zwift did not see any sensors. This is a problem in Sonoma only. The CSR dongles have an antenna etched onto the PCB, which sits out on a little PCB ear. Range was average. The TP-Link, Edimax, Asus and Aventry Bluetooth 5 dongles contain the Realtek 8671B chip. The TP-Link BT500 has a solid metal bar antenna. In my tests, this had the best signal, but only slightly better than the CSR boards. The pluggable Insignia, IO Gear, and Asus BT400 Bluetooth 4 dongles all contain the Broadcom BC20702. These are not plug and play on Windows, but work on all Macs, including Apple Silicon Macs running Sonoma. These dongles have a zigzag antenna etched right onto the PCB. Again, the range is kind of average. Based on my findings, for PCs, I recommend the Heidi's 4.0 CSR. It didn't have quite as good as range as the TP-Link BT500, but being Bluetooth 4, it's a simpler software stack, fewer dependencies and fewer things to go wrong. There is no benefit of using Bluetooth 5 with fitness devices. For Macs, I recommend the Heidi's 4.0 dongle again, 
unless you're on Sonoma or higher, in which case the pluggable Bluetooth 4 is a better choice. Though using the companion app on your phone might be a better effective solution because the pluggable didn't have a very good range. So what are the gotchas? Well, connecting Bluetooth devices takes longer in the first place than with App Plus. I'll try to explain the reason for this delay. For Bluetooth devices to connect, the central device, the PC, scans for advertising packets broadcasted by the peripheral device, such as a heart rate monitor. Imagine your PC is a radio, trying to find the station where your heart rate monitor is broadcasting. But the monitor is also hopping between three stations, channel 37, 38 and 39. The PC scans these stations one by one, trying to catch the monitor's signal. The connection is made when the PC and the monitor land on the same channel at the same time. In addition, once a connection is made, the peripheral switches mode to become a server and starts sending information to the master at regular intervals. I believe this change from advertising to sending data mode is what's happening when you see the message no signal on screen, even though the peripheral is clearly connected. If you see that, then just wait. Here's a major gotcha for Mac users. If you listen to music on Bluetooth headphones whilst wifting, there's currently an unresolved bug from 2022 where music slows down and drops in pitch when Zwift starts up. To summarize, a USB Bluetooth dongle can improve your signal in the following ways. First, external placement. It allows for better positioning away from the internal electronic components that cause interference. Second, direct line of sight. By using an extension cable, a Bluetooth dongle can be positioned for a direct line of sight to the trainer, avoiding obstructions. Third, a dedicated connection, dedicated antenna. A dongle has its own antenna not shared with a Wi-Fi chip. Fourth, frequency hopping. Unlike AMP+, Bluetooth dongles quickly switch frequencies within the 2.4 GHz band to avoid interference. However, the same channel hopping slows down making a connection in the first place. And finally, people report improved trainer responsiveness over Bluetooth. I hope these tips have helped you achieve a more stable connection and a more enjoyable Zwift experience. Please consider subscribing to support the channel. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day.